Back in 1994, Revolution Software released Beneath a Steel Sky, a point-and-click adventure game that quickly became a cult classic. 25 years later, the same studio is soon to release a sequel, Beyond a Steel Sky. The game's original creator, Charles Cecil, visited our studio to tell us more about the game and show off the very first gameplay demo. Well, I guess in some ways Beyond a Steel Sky is, is 30 years of experience because um, Revolution was founded in 1990 and we've written a number of adventure games since then. And in many ways it's bringing some of the ideas that, some of our original ideas, there's one in particular called Virtual Theatre. Virtual Theatre is the idea that characters walk around the world, they talk to each other, they have their own motivations and that you can subvert the world. And that means that the environment is much, much more dynamic than you'd expect from an adventure game normally. But this is very much an adventure game. So as well as the virtual theater, you can go into the world and there's an AI system called, called Link. And you're able to subvert those commands. So unexpected things happen. The characters then respond to those unexpected things. And, and hopefully humorous events then emerge from that, which allows the player to solve puzzles. So it's much, much more dynamic than you'd expect from a normal adventure game. But it is unashamedly an adventure game. So the, the story is about Robert Foster. Uh, he's a character that appeared in the original Beneath the Steel Sky. And uh, we're working with a comic book artist called Dave Gibbons. And uh, Dave and I are currently working on the block out for the comic book, which will accompany the game uh, as, as, as an animated uh, comic book. The interesting thing about particularly an adventure game is that before uh, a player can be expected to have to work to solve puzzles, then they need to know the context, they need to know the motivation. So we have to, trans we have to make sure that they know enough about the story to really want to solve those puzzles. And that's why working uh, with a comic book artist like Dave is perfect because we can convey so much of that, um, that, that backstory. Um, we can uh, make sure that there's empathy with the characters uh, and a comic medium is a perfect way to do that. So virtual theater applies to human beings, but it also applies to the birds. They're rather vicious birds. They're called gangangs, um, which are an Australian type of parrot. And uh, if you approach them, then if, if there's food involved, then they'll chase you off. So of course that creates uh, the opportunity for puzzles. Um, but then also the, the, the droids as well uh, have virtual theater. And in many ways they're quite fun because as you can imagine, a droid is much easier to consider what its motivation should be rather than humans. And there's, there's, there's one puzzle in the first section where you create a, um, you, you break a system by link hacking it. Uh, that attracts the droid uh, and when it gets on the system then a, a magnet that was meant to be collecting scrap picks it up and it turns out of course that it has the same battery type as the one that you need for the truck so therefore by trapping it you can then power, power, um, power it down. Uh, the problem of course is that at the end when you come back it remembers and, and so you, you know but certainly what's, what's, what's fantastic is what I love the most is actually towards the end of the project, certainly the design stage, is actually going back over and, and, and trying to simplify all the ideas as far as possible, but then giving them all payoffs. Mm -hmm. So you do return in this section and you, you will encounter a lot and you will uh, need to resolve any problems that you might have caused first time around. I would like to think this is a blend between the traditional adventure game which, where you have the, the satisfaction of moving forward and in doing so the narrative progresses, but also the morality. And we do have major choices um, and they play out. So rather than uh, what a lot of adventure games have, which is you have a choice and then very quickly you, you, you come back, we have some key characters in the game and the way that you respond to them, both of which would be logical, but it's a choice, a moral choice, will have a profound effect in the way that the ending unfolds. Now, I'm a great believer that it's hard writing one ending. So writing multiple endings, in, in my opinion, is, is, is pretty ludicrous because they're always gonna be, they'll be the strongest and weaker ones. But what we want is we want to flavor that ending. So yes, there's very much a, a reflection of the way that you've chosen to uh, interact with certain characters throughout the game will affect the way that the, the flavor of the, the ending as it unfolds.